you doing? Uh, my name is Ryan. So recently we decided to go on a winemaking adventure, I guess you could say. Uh, me and my wife decided to start making wine after going up north and seeing her mom actually making it. And what we did was we bought a kit, which is through Orchard Breezen. Pretty easy kit to do. It comes with everything you need. We have about four batches. We have two completely done and two still in the process. Um, the first batch we did was a uh, strawberry rhubarb, which was actually really good, excellent. My wife's not a big wine drinker, but she actually loves it. The second one we have is a blueberry bliss. Uh, third one is a acai raspberry, and then the fourth one is a cranberry craze. So what we did was we kind of put together a video to show you how our process is and what we do. It's more of a something we do for fun as well, something we can do together. Um, You'll be able to see all that, but some of the stuff's not in the video is everything we do, like as in sanitizing, because obviously you don't want to see me sanitizing all, everything, every step. So before each step, you want to clean and sanitize, and before you go on to the next step, obviously. And each time, sanitizing is one of the biggest things you want to do, because you don't want bacteria to grow while your wine is actually fermenting or clearing through the process and then before bottling. But here is pretty much the uh, video. So... What's going on here is we are now going to add purified water that we just picked up in gallon jugs at Walmart to the uh, fermenting bucket that's been cleaned and sanitized. We're adding four liters right now. We're going to be adding the uh, number one package from the kit called Fittonite to the water in the bucket, four liters, and we're going to mix it. We're going to do it slowly so it adds and dissolves properly. Next thing we'll be adding into the fermenting bucket is the concentrated juice that comes with the kit. So this is actually the fruit that you're going to be turning into wine here. What we always do is add a little water to the bag just to mix it around to get all the juice out. Makes it a little bit easier to wash it around. Just gonna mix it for a couple seconds just to make it sure it's getting mixed with the bit night and four liters of water. Now you're just gonna continue with the rest of the water. It's about six gallons of water you put into your fermenting bucket. And you're just gonna mix it around and make sure it's all stirred in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test the specific gravity of the wine. I'm placing it into the test cylinder with a wine thief. I need a hydrometer reading between 1.050 and 1.60. And I had a 1.060, which is in the tolerance. Then when you're done doing your specific gravity reading, go ahead and just pour the wine back into the fermenting bucket. The 
next step, you're going to sprinkle the yeast that comes with the kit on top of the wine. You want it to stay on top of the wine. So what I do is I move the bucket into the dry, cool place where it's going to sit for the next 14 days. And then I sprinkle it on there and then firmly place on the lid to the fermenting bucket. And then I place the airlock system on top of the uh, fermenting bucket in the secure hole. Um, in the airlock system, what I do is I take a little bit of, um, of the sanitizer that I use to sanitize everything with, and I place it in the airlock as well, just so when air gets out and everything like that, it is sanitized water. And you should see bubbles within two days to show that the wine is fermenting. Now we're at 14 days later after the wine has fermented. What I'm doing here is just taking off the lid of the fermenting bucket remove it and I already have everything clean and sanitized again including the carboy. I'm going to use the siphon and place it into the carboy and I'm going to siphon the wine into a small container around two liters and put it aside. I'm going to use the siphon to siphon the rest of the wine from the fermenting bucket into the carboy. Now I'm going to add the sulfate from package 2, which is included in the kit. I'm just going to add it right into the carboy. Then I'm going to stir with my electric stirrer for a couple minutes. After stirring, for a couple minutes, I'm going to add in the potassium sorbate from the kit, labeled 2B, right into the carboy again. And then I'm going to stir vigorously again. This kit came with two packages, so make sure you add them both. adding now to the carboy is the sweetening blend or finishing blend that was included inside the kit. This kit also included three packages of malic acid which I added to the carboy. After adding the finishing blend and the malic acid, I then stir vigorously.
now we're adding the D1 packet, which is Kesla. Now we're adding the second pouch, which is Kaidazan. It's going to be D2 in the kit. Just make sure you add it about a minute after you add the first pouch. You're going to mix vigorously for five minutes. Now you're going to take the rest of that wine you put to the side, the two liters, and you're going to add to the carboy so that it's about two inches from the top of the carboy. Now I'm going to take a rubber plug and plug in a airlock system to that rubber plug and place it in the top of that carboy so that it's Airlock. Filtering the wine isn't required, but we filter ours. We use a Pintech clear filter housing that's used for under the sink usually. We use a 1 4 by 1 4 adapter for each side that holds the clear tubing. And this is the uh, wrapping on there for the watertight seal. This is a 5 micro filter, it's a PD5934. This is how the filtration system works. We use a siphon that goes through the filtration system into the bottling bucket. This is a picture of what the filtered wine looks like. Filtered on the left, unfiltered on the right. Once the carboy becomes empty, all I do is stick the siphon in the sink and turn the filtration system upside down to get the rest of the wine through the filter into the bottling bucket. Now that the wine is done filtering and now it's in the bottling bucket, it's time to bottle your wine. I use a spring-loaded hose that has a black little nipple on the end of it that when it's depressed releases the flow of wine and when pulled up stops the flow of wine. On the right, this is the first time using it with the strawberry rhubarb. Just an up close look at what it does look like. After bottling, now it's time to cork it. So what I do is I have a uh, handheld corker. We soak the corks for about 20 minutes in sanitized water and then place it into the uh, corker. And all we do is it grabs onto the side of the bottle, you press firmly down, and then it's corked. Again, this step isn't required either, but after we're done corking, we do use PVC shrink capsules. I use a heat gun to um, shrink the capsules onto the top of the wine bottles. It makes it a little bit easier. I'm wearing a glove so I don't get fingerprints all over the bottles either. You just gotta be very careful while doing this because the heat capsules will shrink very fast and they could warp. So you wanna try to do it evenly. Here's a picture of one up close after it's been shrunk. So this has been my experience pretty much of bottling wine. Um, it's a fun thing to do with uh, friends and family. Um, it takes about 30 days so it gives you something to look forward to. 14 for the uh, fermenting and 14 for the clearing process. Um, 
obviously the last day is the best day because not only do you get to bottle it, you get to cork it, and you get to put on the shrink wraps, you get to actually drink it. So um, it's been a fun experience. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Give me a subscribe and a like, please. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and have a good day.